Welcome to the Dancer Studio. Today I want to show you how to create this enchanting castle balloon arch. And it all starts by inflating two 11 inch balloons and using a sizer box to size them to 9 inches in diameter. Press the balloon against the 9 inch hole and slowly let air out of the balloon until it just fits through. Once both of those balloons are 9 inches in diameter, tie them into a pair by wrapping the nozzles around twice and tying them in a simple knot. To help each layer of our castle towers lay nice and flat, it's helpful to tie these pairs together right at the very end of the nozzle so there's a bunch of room between the balloons. Then inflate another 11 inch balloon to 9 inches in diameter and tie it to the balloons of the pair. Wrap the nozzle of the single balloon around the nozzles of the pair and then take one nozzle from that pair and tie it to the single nozzle with a knot. This will create a trio. Now you're going to make one more pair just like we did a moment ago and combine the trio and pair together so that all the nozzles touch right in the center and then twist one balloon from each of those around each other locking them into a set of five. Remember these steps because we'll be making lots of sets of five to create our towers. Now the towers are built on these six foot tall balloon stands and it's critical that any stand you use has a weighted base or you add weight to the bottom of it because the arch between the two towers will pull them inwards if there's no weight on the bottom. To assemble the tower, I'm going to take my first set of five balloons that are sized to nine inches in diameter and slip them around the pole so that the nozzles of that set are touching the pole. Then take the two balloons with the pole in between them and twist them around each other twice to secure the set of five to the stand. Now I'm going to take a set of five that's sized to eight inches in diameter, slide it around the pole so that the nozzles are touching it, take those two balloons with the pole in between, twist them around each other, and then press downwards on this set of five so it nestles right against that first set. Now it's critical that one balloon of this current set sits between the two balloons below it so we don't get any major gaps in our tower. The castle I'm building today stands approximately 8 feet tall, and to achieve that 8 feet, I added 10 layers of 8 inch sets of 5 on top of each other. From here, the next couple steps are really critical to the shape of the castle, and to help you keep track of all those details, I've created a set of written plans to go along with today's project. You can find those step-by-step -step instructions linked in the description box below. Now I'm going to make a fairy tale roof for the top of my castle, and I've inflated 6 11 inch balloons to 5 inches in diameter, but whenever you inflate these balloons so small, it's helpful to make sure you push the air deep into the balloon so you don't get a little dimple on the end. Then I tied them into pairs, and I'm going to join all three of those pairs together into a set of six. Simply twist them around each other so all the nozzles are joined right in the center, and then we need to arrange this set of six balloons so that it looks like a five petaled flower. Flatten out one side so that five balloons are around each other with one balloon right in the center, and that one balloon will be the point of our roof. Now I'm going to take an empty 260 modeling balloon and tie the end of that to one of the nozzles of our cluster of six, and that 260 is how I'll join all the roof sections together and attach the roof to the top of the tower. Next, take a set of five that's inflated to seven inches in diameter, flatten it against the table, and then set your set of six right on top of it. Arrange the smaller balloons so that one balloon sits in between each of the larger balloons and that five petaled flower is pointing upright. Then you're going to take that empty 260 balloon, pull it tight, and wrap it under one of the larger balloons, pull it across the top of our roof, and then on the opposite side, wrap it underneath one of the larger balloons again, and that will secure these two pieces together. Make sure you bring that 260 back to the center of those so we can attach the next section. Don't worry if your balloons get a little out of order while you're tying, it's very easy to flatten them once again. Now I'm going to take a set of five that's been inflated to nine inches in diameter, take that 260 that's attached to the upper portion of our roof, pull it down through the center of this last set, wrap it around a couple of balloons, making sure you weave in and out between bigger and smaller balloons, and that will keep them all secured together. Now I'm going to take the roof section over to my tower and join the two of them together using the remaining 260 tail that's coming out of the roof. Set the roof right on top of the tower, making sure one balloon of that roof sits between two balloons below it, and then I'm going to stretch that 260 down underneath one or two of the balloons of the tower, back up around some of the balloons in the roof, and then tie that 260 tail to one of the nozzles of the set that makes up the top of the castle, and that will join the two of them together. Make a second tower in the exact same way, and then we're going to focus on making the arch that spans between them. 
Inflate and tie together 15 pairs of balloons where one balloon is 8 inches and the other balloon is 7.5 inches in diameter. Then you're going to take a 260 balloon and tie that 260 4 to 5 inches into that balloon to one of the nozzles of that pair. You need that 260 tail to be able to attach the arch to the tower later on. For the total length of the arch, I've actually tied two 260s end to end to give me enough length, but you could always add the second one later on. Now you're going to take another balloon pair and lay it right on top of the first one. Pull that 260 balloon up through the center, wrap it around one of the balloons of that new pair nice and tight, and then grab another balloon pair and lay it on in the opposite way so that your balloon pairs alternate back and forth. And when you're looking straight at it, it should look like an X. Now I'm using different colored balloons so you can more easily see the two sizes. The larger balloons should always be on one side and the smaller balloons should always be on the other side. And that's what will give your arch it's nice curved shape. It's also critical that as you tie these together that 260 balloon is nice and tight between each pair as the tension on that 260 balloon will also hold that curve. If it's too loose your arch may actually droop down and just be a straight line. Now I'm going to attach the arch to the towers so that it sits just below the roof line of each of those towers. Count down two balloon layers from that roof line and right between two of those balloons, that's where we're going to take the 260 tail attached to the arch and nestle it right in between two of those balloons and then wrap it tightly in a figure eight pattern around a couple of the balloons of the tower and then back and wrap it around a couple of the balloons of the arch or if your tail is kind of short, you can always tie the end of that tail to one of the nozzles of those last balloons on the end of the arch. Once it's secured in place, you're going to arrange the balloons of the arch so that two of the balloons sit on the front side of the tower and two balloons sit on the back side so that all those balloons are nestled nice and close and there aren't any major gaps. Now we need to create the drawbridge portion of our castle and the base of that section sits away from the main body and will have a little bit of tension pulling on it because of the chain. So I'm going to tie a balloon weight to the end of one of my 260 balloons to keep the end of the drawbridge in place. Take a set of five balloons inflated to eight inches in diameter and tie your balloon weight to the center of this. Slip the weight underneath the set and pull the 260 balloon up through the center. Then snugly wrap it around some of the balloons of that set of five so that they'll be joined together. Now on top of this, we're going to place another set of five that's inflated to six inches in diameter. Nestle this right on top so that one balloon of this set always sits between one balloon of the set below it. Then we're going to take that 260 balloon, pull it up to the center of this set, and wrap it around a couple of these balloons before tying the remaining 260 tail to one of the nozzles of that top set to keep everything nice and tightly secured. Leave that long 260 tail on top of this because we'll use that tail to attach our chain to this base later on. So make two of these bases for the castle and now we can finally make the chain section. For each length of chain, you're going to need eight chrome silver 260 balloons, stretch them out, and then inflate them with four pumps of air from a hand pump. And I like to do is inflate the first one, tuck the nozzle of it under my fingers, give it a quick twist so I don't lose any air, and then inflate the second 260 balloon to four pumps of air, take the two nozzles, wrap them around twice, and tie them in a simple knot. That way we're tying fewer knots overall. Then once you have them tied into a pair, I'm going to squeeze the length of each of the balloons to soften up the latex. You're going to need two of these pairs to start your chain. So flip one of the pairs up on end so you're looking at one side of the balloon. Slip the second pair so that the nozzles of that pair are sitting between the two balloons of the first pair. You're going to pinch the two balloons of the first pair about five inches from the nozzles, capturing that second pair in between. At that pinch point, twist the balloons around each other a couple times to secure them in place. The remaining balloon after that twist should be in line with the balloons before the twist. Now you're going to take the balloons of that second pair and wrap them around so that they capture the twist that we just made with that first pair in between. 
pinch these two balloons and make a twist about five inches in length, and that will create the first two links of our chain. Now soften the balloons from where you have them and continue this motion of bringing the two balloons around the twist that you just made. Pinch the balloons together about five inches from the last twist, and then twist those two balloons around each other, securing them in place. Continue to alternate pinching and twisting the pairs until you get near the end of the 260 balloons. Once there's no longer enough air-filled balloon to make another link, you're going to pinch your fingers around the final twist that those two balloons made, nip the ends of those balloons to let any remaining air out, and then tie the tail ends of those balloons in a double knot. Then trim any extra balloon after that knot with the pair of scissors so that you don't see them in your finished chain. Now I'm going to nestle the nozzles of a new pair right up against the knot that we just tied. I'm going to treat this joint as if it were a twist from a previous chain link and grab the two balloons that were left over from the previous pair, wrap them around this joint, pinch and twist it just like you normally would, and that will seamlessly hide the joint of our new balloon pair. I'll repeat this step when the second original pair gets to the end of its length, and then continue on making chain links until we reach the end of one of these new pairs. At that point, whichever one ends up being shorter, I will make a final chain, twist it, nip the ends with a pair of scissors to release any remaining air, and then tie this in a double knot. On this link, I'm going to trim away any remaining 260 tails so you can't see it. But the remaining pair of balloons that happen to be longer, I'm going to make a final link that's about five inches in length, just like all the others, pinch it, twist it, and then after this twist, I'm going to nip the ends, let the air out, tie them in a double knot right against the air-filled link, but these tails I'm going to leave long because that's how I'll tie the chain into the tower later on. So make sure you leave these tails attached. Now I'm going to join the drawbridge base to the chain that we just created. Take the starting nozzle end of the chain and slip the 260 balloon that we left on top of our base through that first link of the chain, then insert the chain down into the center of that set of five, pulling that 260 tight and wrapping it around a couple of the balloons of the base. Let the tail go and it'll disappear from sight. Then angle the chain so it rests between two of the balloons of that top set of five. Then you're gonna take that single final link that we made on the end of our chain and insert it between two balloons that are three layers down from the roof of our castle. Make sure you press this chain all the way back between those two balloons and and using the tail ends of the 260s, wrap those 260s around one or two of the balloons of our tower right next to that chain, and that will hold the end of the chain in place. Even though I used eight 260 balloons for the two chains that I made, they ended up being slightly different lengths. Now I want my castle to be symmetrical, so an easy way to adjust the length of the chain is to press any extra amount deep into the castle tower to hide the extra balloons. Then once you've attached both of your chains, you want to go along the length of them, rotating and straightening out these balloons so that our drawbridge comes straight out in front of the castle. If you need a little extra help creating a castle for your own party, be sure to check out those plans linked in the description box below. And if you're looking for even more balloon designs to up your party game, check out our ultimate bundle with lots of balloon plans at a significant discount. So until the next time, remember, stay creative everybody!